This time tomorrow, we do expect to be showing you images from the funerals of two little ones. In the meantime, policymakers, what they're doing right now is wrestling with what to do about a police response that seems to have clearly fallen short and how to tackle the issue of gun control. We must continue prayer for Uvalde all over the United States. Memorials of a different kind sprung up all around Uvalde Monday. A community in mourning is holding visitation for 10-year-old Maite Rodriguez and 10-year-old Amarillo Garza. Their funerals will be the first of two beginning tomorrow. If I can give you a hug. Marcy Heschel is a psychotherapist who's traveled here to help where she can. There's shock, there's disbelief. That's going to turn into the bargaining stage where people are asking the should haves the could haves the would haves Returning this morning from grieving with families, President Biden says he intentionally avoided a contentious gun control debate during the visit. But he feels there are a few reasonable Republicans who will be moved into making sensible changes to gun laws. I think there's a recognition in their part that the Navy can't keep continuing like this. Still, what's being discussed by a bipartisan group of senators are modest at best. Certainly not the conversations being had in places like New York about raising the age to purchase a firearm. It's a very good question. How does an 18-year-old legally acquire these, you know, what I would call a weapon of mass murder? Mm -hmm. And so uh, those are big questions that we're looking to resolve in the final days of this legislative session. Separately, the Justice Department will begin looking at the law enforcement response to the school shooting, following a gutting admission last week that law enforcement refused to breach the classroom door for more than 45 minutes, even with children inside calling 911 for help. Of course it was not the right decision, it was the wrong decision, period.